Let's get this light on. All right, that looks good, I think. All right, put this down here. Using my Zoom recorder for audio today. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me uh, if you like it or not. Um, all right, so DJ Feature from Feature Presentations. Today I'm gonna show you how uh, lately I've been using Lightroom uh, out of all sources to color grade my video. Now it's not a direct link from Adobe Premiere, which I use to Lightroom. I will leave a link where you can purchase this plugin. Very simple, that can be used in, um, I think any software to generate a LUT out of Lightroom. Lightroom is the ultimate tool in my opinion to um, you know, color photos and stuff like that. And the same principles can be carried over to your editing software. But there are a couple of things that you cannot um, transport over. Uh, once you generate this LUT. Uh, the clarity, the dehazer, and anything like that. Mask, things like that. But you can, uh, anything related to color can be generated into a LUT and it can go into this um, uh, color grade. So I'm gonna show you the exact um, piece of video footage that I'm using to generate this LUT. I'm gonna call this LUT the outdoor sports LUT um, because Basically, it was from a uh, video shoot that was done outdoors. I was just filming uh, actually King Toddy. And uh, I just kind of like that footage to start to generate the LUT. And so um, you can use this on a lot of different pieces of footage, but it is subjective. There's a lot of tweaking that can be done. Um, basically, you know, what I'm using this LUT for is kind of a baseline. It's doing the bulk of the work, but you know, you can still go into your editing software, in this case, Premiere Pro, and do tweaks to contrast, uh, highlights, shadows. You can add, you know, your own vignette. You can add, um, you know, different type of mask and stuff like that. But I think it's definitely a baseline. So I'm gonna show you how this color grade uh, generated LUT from Lightroom was able to produce uh, these images. So in the comments below, uh, please let me know what you guys think about um, you know, using this technique. Uh, let me know what you think about the footage, You know how it can be approved upon, or is it good as is. And also, I will leave a link where you guys can actually uh, just get this LUT for free if you don't wanna go through this whole process. You know, It's always good to have different LUTs and things like that in your packages because you never know when you may just be in a rush, you wanna grab something to throw on footage. So once again, just be mindful that this LUT or all LUTs can be tweaked. You know, you can drop the intensity and then you can go back into the color grade process as far as your basic correction curves, et cetera creative tab and you can you know add saturation you can add vibrance all of those things and you can make it really really nice and then pretty much generate your own LUT uh, out of this footage and one other good thing is any preset users you know people that use the that you'd like to use presets in Lightroom you can also generate LUTs from those presets and use that on your footage as well so uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think and I'm going to just show you a quick process of how I generated this LUT. Peace. Okay, so here's the clip that we're going to use to generate uh, this LUT uh, inside Lightroom. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to freeze this frame, export this frame, and you're going to want to make sure that you have TIFF selected. Uh, T-I-F-F, -F, uh, not a JPEG. I think uh, I'm not sure if those will work in Lightroom, but here's what we're going to do. So we're going to designate the folder. Uh, we're going to call this folder my LUTs that I have on my desktop for now. So once we have that, that process is done. Now we can exit out of this Premiere Pro project and we're going to go to uh, make sure that we have it inside of our folder. So this is it. This is a TIFF file, T-I-F. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to open up Lightroom Classic. Not sure if it works in regular Lightroom. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go to our library tab here and we're going to find where that file is. So we're going to import it. And so here we can see we have it right here. This is where we're going to go to the TIFF or TIF file. Now we're gonna import that. Now once it's imported, we'll go to our develop tab. Here we have our 
image. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, now there's so many techniques, it doesn't really matter what how you edit in Lightroom because anything once you have it edited, as long as it's relating to color, can be generated into a LUT. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my saturation tab here and I'm going to desaturate all of the colors. Now the reason I'm not using the just turn this image into a black and white is because once I do that then I will not be able to add more color. So now we have a clear black and white image. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go up to my uh, basic um, tabs here and what I'm going to do is just uh, come down on the blacks to about uh, maybe about 40. Now as I said this technique does not really matter as far as um, you're going to get your um, coloring exactly how you like it. This is just what I'm going for right now. I'm going to boost my whites to about the uh, about the 60 range. And now what I'll do is I'm going to make this a nice black and white image. So I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here. You know, not too much. I'll drop the shadows a bit. And now we have a decent black and white image. So now what I'm going to do is go down to my HSL uh, once again, and now I'm going to start to add colors how I want them. So the first thing I'm going to do is check, go from uh, the top, which is the red and see what red does. doesn't really do much. It does bring out a little bit of red in his lips, but I don't need that. So I could kind of keep that to minus 75. Then the orange, this is going to be part of the skin tones and other uh, anything red. We don't have any orange in this image other than his skin tones. So we're just going to bring this up until we're satisfied. Now uh, that looks pretty good. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, we're not going to add greens because there's no greens in it. Uh, the aquas, there's no aquas in it. And so the blue, here's where we're going to add the blue. I think in this area right back here, we have some blue. So we're going to go here. And now we're going to add some nice blue. So now you can see how a little bit of that contrast is being brought out. So we pretty much have white here. We have some orange here. And now we have blue here. But I want to change this blue into maybe a different color blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my luminance tab here under the HSL. And I'm just going to play with the uh, slider as far as how much I want his skin to be uh, illuminated. So uh, we'll, we'll go like right here. That's pretty good, I think. And now we'll go to what we want to do with the, uh, we'll play with the luminance of the blues. So, you know, as you go down on the slider, they become less illuminated. And so I think something like right here might be pretty good. So now I'm going to mess around with the hue not of the orange because I don't want to mess with the hue of his skin, but I'm going to mess with the hue of the blue right here. So I'm going to turn it more into a, like a, uh, like a teal color. I think that color works pretty nice and that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to do with this image. And now, um, oh, the other thing I forgot to do is go back into my yellows. Um, there is a little bit of yellow in that fence. So we go back to the saturation. And you see how the yellow starts to come out. I just think that gives it a little bit um, of a nice variation, but we don't want to do too much because as we can see, the yellows can spill onto his skin and we don't want the yellows there. So we'll go back down here a little bit just so we can have a little bit of yellow, as you can see in the chain links there. And so now that's pretty much it. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go up to file export LUT. And there we have it. And now I think pretty much this uh, option, there's so many options, but I think this one works best. So we'll just go and keep that checked and then we'll export this as a LUT. Now we can uh, name it here, but I'm not sure exactly. Um, we can give it a name here, but I'm just going to export it as is. So we export and as you can see, it's doing its thing up here. It tells you and now it's ready. So now we can just minimize or exit out of Lightroom Classic. And now this LUT is right here on our uh, 
in the folder that we selected. So this is it right here. So I'm just gonna name this, uh, let's see, or as you can see, I already have one, but I'm gonna name this Outdoor Sports LUT 2. Okay, so now that's just so we can know how to find it. Uh, it's gonna be in this folder here. So now we'll go back to Premiere and what we'll do is we're going to add an adjustment layer and uh, we will take that adjustment layer and drop it right over the clip we'll extend it to the duration of the clip and so now what we'll do is what i like to do first is mess around with make sure that my exposure and all of that is uh, proper so i'll open up my lumetri scopes and now i can add uh, blacks and whites as you can see on this uh, scope here you kind of have some leeway where we can drop the blacks so on the clip itself I will go down and drop the blacks uh, just so that they're touching that line we don't need a lot of it to touch the line just any part of it just so we know that we have some the right amount of blacks so I'll just uh, make sure we have that now I'll go to my whites and I will go up on that and the goal would be to try to also reach that 100 um, marker. So as you can see up here, it is a little bit touching and that's fine. So I can drop my whites a little bit and then um, that should be pretty good. And so the next thing I'll do is just go now and uh, add my LUT. So as we go here, we'll go to our creative tab. So here's the new one. So now we can just open that. And now you can see that we have a nice LUT. Now, as I'm saying, you know, this is just my taste on this particular uh, clip. I will drag another adjustment layer here and now I can do other tweaks inside of this LUT, you know, just to make it how I want. So if I wanted to say, uh, I do have some blown out highlights here and that's fine. Uh, it doesn't bother to look in my opinion. So, but if I wanted to drop it a little bit, now you can see a little bit detail there. Uh, but now the image is dark, but it's actually still exposed pretty good because uh, our scopes are telling us that. Um, so now what we'll do is just maybe raise the exposure a little bit. You know, that looks pretty good. Um, and now we can, uh, we can add a vignette if we wanted to, uh, but we're going to do that on the um, on the other uh, layer that we have here because we have our LUT here and our adjustment layer there. So what we'll do is maybe add a vignette. We can do that, you know. Um, you know, you can do so many different things. Um, if you wanted to go into your creative tab, um, you know, you can go to uh, vibrance. You can add vibrance, you can drop vibrance, you can up the saturation. There's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, we'll just uh, add a little faded film if you wanted to, if you wanted to have that type of look. And let's just see how once we play the clip, everything looks pretty good. I mean, it's all about how you want it to look, but we'll drop the faded film look and start over. So you can see it's a pretty decent looking look. It's a nice LUT. Um, let's just try it on another uh, clip. Let's add the LUT to that and see how that looks. So here we have it on the timeline. And now here's our LUT. Let's see. Now we'll just drag this across. And now we can see what type of LUT look that makes. Now that's a nice look. I mean, the sky, that's my type of sky. But you can do tweaks here. Something I forgot to mention is check out white balance. So we're going to go to this white spot in this t-shirt. And we're going to hit that. So now the image should be balanced uh, color wise, starting with the white. So white is white. And then all of the other colors should fall in line. We can go up on our whites. You know, we still have a little bit of that blue in the sky. Uh, we can add more saturation to this image, but we don't want to add too much. And we also can mess around with our creative tab. Like if we wanted to give it like a faded look, we can do that as well. It's kind of a nice, uh, almost a vintage type of look, um, but we can play with all of these sliders and they can all do different things. So if we wanted to bring out a little more uh, detail, we can make a small S curve 
and then you know we can just uh, boost more contrast we can drop contrast however you want to do we can uh, go with the more highlights we can go with more exposure just always keeping our eye on that graph to make sure that uh, nothing is clipping in either direction and then once we play it this is what we have so it's definitely something you can do so guys uh, hope you liked the video and I'll uh, leave your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.